Hi, this is Raj and in this session we are going to cover more details on timestamp based CDC technique. One of the intrusive techniques which we highlighted in the previous session. Following are the topics which we would go through as part of this session. What is timestamp based CDC technique? And when to use this technique? How to implement this technique using Pentaho data integration or the Kettle tool? What is timestamp based CDC technique? This technique depends on a timestamp field in the source to identify and extract the changed data sets. At a minimum, one timestamp field is required for implementing this CDC technique. However, in most of the source systems, two timestamp fields are created, with one field to store the time at which the record was created, and another field to store the time at which the record was last changed. When to use this technique? This technique is the most easy to implement technique and it is one of the widely used CDC techniques for extracting incremental data. However, this technique comes with the absence of a few essential capabilities and they are distinction between inserts and updates. Only when the source system contains both an insert and an update timestamp, this feature can be detected or this difference can be detected between an insert and update. Deleted record detection. This is not possible unless the source system only logically deletes a record or in other words, the source system has an end or deleted date but is not physically deleted from the table. Multiple update deduction. When a record is updated multiple times during the period between the previous and the current load date, these intermediate updates get lost in the process. So, this technique shall be used only when such constraints can be relaxed in the ETL processing. How to implement this technique using Pentaho Kettle tool? So, before going ahead with the implementation part, let us go through the tools that are used for this demo. Prerequisites items Pentaho Kettle. Here I am using 6.1 Stable Community Edition, the latest version of Pentaho Kettle by the time of this session. JDK version 1.8 Postgres database one for the source and another for the target and then PG admin 3 client tool for accessing the Postgres database sample table structure with data in those tables for this demo we have a table named rental in the source database the source database name is DVD Rental and it is based on Postgres. This table deals with the store's DVD rental data and it contains a field named Last Update. This field holds the timestamp at which a particular rental record was modified. So this is the timestamp field which we would use for developing CDC process through Pentaho Kettle tool. Let me switch over to the Pentaho Kettle tool now. So here we have the steps in our transformation file. Get dates for CDC with fields mapped to the transformation start date and end date. So how we are mapping these fields to the transformation start date and end date? To answer that or to do this Double click on the canvas area and select logging tab in transformation properties window. I have created a table named transformation log in the target to capture the transformation logs along with the start time and end time of the transformation. 
more details on fields involved in transformation logging tab will be covered in a separate session with this logging enabled what pentaho kettle does is it would capture the transformation start and the end time along with its execution status such as start or end or stop stop would be the terminal status of a transformation if there is an error encountered during the execution stage the next step is a table input step where we extract data from source based on the timestamp field in this case the timestamp field is last update you can see that the sql has used two variables from the previous step which are transformation start and end date to substitute as values of last update field this would select the records that are greater than transformation start date and less than or equal to transformation end date and this would be done on its every execution once the data is extracted in the next step get system info we are retrieving the current system date so that the same can be used for identifying the time at which this data is uploaded into our target the target database is dvd rental dm and it also has the table named rental with this structure before executing the transformation let us check our source and target table to see some statistics of these tables in scope the count of record in source rental table is 16044 and the count of record in target rental table is 0 So let's go ahead and execute the transformation now and let us check the results in rental table as well as the transformation log table After the first execution of the transformation let us check the count of records in source as well as target table the count of record in target rental table is equal to the top source table which is 16044 and the transformation log table is filled with the following details start date which you can see is being populated with default minimum date set by the pentaho kettle tool this is because as part of the first run one would expect all the data as of date to be copied over to the target from source end date has been populated in the transformation log table as transformation start time so the next time when transformation runs we would expect the cdc processing should take place from last successful runs end time and the next runs start time also you can notice that the fields lines input and lines output are marked with values are populated with values 16044 as expected so with this after the first run we can see that the results are as expected now let us insert a new record and see how timestamp based cdc implementation works i have inserted a new record now with rental id as 16050 after the next run we would expect only one record to get captured over to the target 
So let's go ahead and execute the transformation now and then check the results in rental table at the target and transformation log table at the target. You can see from the transformation log table that it has a start date of previous successful run time and end date as current transformation start time. These date fields in transformation log table has been picked up by a transformation step get dates for CDC and the step has used these fields for CDC processing to fetch the incremental records. Now let's update the same new rental record with return date and last update date as current timestamp and let's see how the timestamp based CDC implementation works for this case. For the sake of this demo, let me also introduce an about step and disable the insert or update step just to show how the failure scenario is handled by the CDC technique. So that's done and let us run the transformation now. You can see that the transformation has incurred failure. Let us check the results in rental table and transformation log table. The rental table in target has not got our update as expected. The transformation log table shows that it has a status as stop and this instance of run has retrieved our single updated record but it has failed with the error due to the abort step which we introduced for this demo. Now let us check the start and end date of this transformation run. It has a start date of previous successful run and end date as current transformation start time. These date fields in transformation log table has been used by the transformation step get dates for CDC for the CDC processing to fetch the incremental records. Now let us disable the about step again and restore the transformation to its original version. The expectation of this next run would be that the transformation should pick that updated record again and process the same irrespective of its failure in the last run. Let us go ahead and execute the transformation to check for the results. The rental table in target has now got our updated record as expected. The transformation log table shows that it has a status as n which shows that the execution is successful. Also this instance of transformation run has retrieved our single updated record and processed the same which can be verified mean by means of looking at the lines updated field which has a record count of 1. Now check out the start and end date of the transformation. It has a start date of previous successful run and not the failure run. The end date is populated with current transformation start time. This is an important aspect to bear in mind and one should appreciate the fact that how the tool is automatically identifying the date range based on its previous run status. Hope this demo had given you enough details on what a timestamp based CDC implementation is and how it works through Pentaho's
standard transformation logging table feature. Of course, the users can always implement their own transformation execution tracking table to capture the start and end time of the transformation and then perform an inc incremental data loading based on the data captured in the tracking table. This demo just shows you one of the ways which can be achieved through Pentaho Kettle standard logging table feature.